A tenant in the Bronx is accusing a landlord of making her apartment unlivable by cutting off the gas and replacing the door with a piece of plywood. I don't know if that's true or not. <laughs> okay. Anyway. The article comes to us from News 12 and it says Bronx tenant accuses landlord of making apartment unlivable with plywood door and cut off gas. Bronx residents and activists rallied in Mott Haven Monday to bring attention to a landlord they say he has a history of allegations against him from his tenants that dates back over a decade and a half. Resident Victoria Ramirez says she has been forced to use a plywood as a front door for a few days after she says landlord Scott Kalb showed up and took away the original one. That's just one in what Ramirez and neighbors call a violent series of actions from Kalb during a rally that started outside his office and ended at her home. Yeah, now, I normally don't do articles like this because, you know, it looks a lot at the tenant's perspective, but um, I'm going to go over the first part of the article, kind of goes over what the tenant says happened, and then near the end of the article they kind of talk about what the landlord says really happened okay and so uh, i like to do this because it kind of shows you that hey you know everything the tenant's saying is not true resident victoria ramirez says she has been forced to use plywood as a front door for a few days after she says landlord Scott Cobb showed up and took the away the original one that's just one in what ramirez and neighbors call okay i already read this She says she has missed paychecks during the coronavirus pandemic after undergoing surgery and, and was unable to meet rent a few times. Since the eviction moratorium legally bars the landlord from kicking her out, she says Kalb has instead worked to make her apartment unlivable, accusing him of showing up unannounced and shoving her kid's babysitter, cutting off the cooking gas and removing that door. She says calls to the rental office to complain has only made the matters worse. Okay, so yeah, uh, she she's claiming him, uh, him of shoving a babysitter and all sorts of other stuff. I mean, I I don't know if any of this is true or you know if she's just trying to get out of paying the rent. But now let's go into what he says has happened. News Twelve spoke with Calb on the phone, and he denied the accusations. He says he has never shoved anyone and showed up to turn off the gas because his porter smelled a leak. As for the door, Kalb says the city told him the home has two others on the way and that since it is a historical building, the city said the third one was illegal since it changed the facade. The facade, I'm sorry. Kalb says Ramirez refused to sign a lease and served her dispossess. So here, here we go with the real situation going on, right? He turned off the gas because there was a gas leak. He had to turn it off for safety reasons. He replaced the front door because the city made him replace the front door because it's a historical building and it didn't meet the specifications required. Okay, so he had to replace that door with a new one and the new one just wasn't there yet. So, you know, that, that's another non-issue. Now, as for shoving the babysitter or whatever, I don't know if that's true or not. He says it's, not, it's, it's just a case of he said, she said. If that really happened, the police should have been called. There was no police report filed. At least it doesn't say that here. So, therefore, it didn't happen. Okay? So, I mean, just a bunch of you know, lies and excuses. You know, the tenant doesn't understand what's going on. Just making up excuses why they haven't paid rent. And, you know, trying to garner sympathy for why they shouldn't be removed from this property okay the landlord has every right to remove a tenant who isn't paying rent in a normal situation but during the eviction moratorium all of a sudden you know these people are emboldened and they just want to just trash good landlords who are just trying to get by and just barely doing so she's making the whole thing up she's not like the top person on my list if i was trying to do anything she's like in the middle I've got people who owe me $35,000, said Kalb. <laughs> Kalb says if he was trying to force her out in what's called a constructive eviction, Ramirez would have other options as well. She can get me in court in three days. I would love her to do that. I would love her to go down to 163rd Street in the courthouse and say she was locked out or attempted to lock out. And let's settle it in there. Yeah, see, and... It, 
this guy, I mean, he obviously has a lot of, you know, tenants who are not doing him right right now. And he's like, this isn't even my biggest problem. You think I'm worried about her, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, yeah, she she's making a lot of stuff up. It sounds like she's making a lot of stuff up. And, you know, this guy, he has a lot to deal with right now. You know, being a landlord right now in a place like New York, it's crazy. And he has to deal with lots of tenants who aren't paying him rent, yet still he has to make the maintenance and repairs and uh, capital expenditures and utilities and insurance and taxes and everything else. So, yeah, I, I'm going to side with this landlord in this situation. I just don't believe everything that this tenant is saying. All right, so I have another article for you, and this one's coming out of St. Louis from Fox 2 Now, and it says, Eviction Help for Tenants and Landlords. A new crisis from the COVID-19 pandemic may be looming for St. Louis. The resumption of evictions for people struggling to keep up with rent, but there is another solution where landlords get paid and residents stay home. Court papers and debt were piling up on Thomas Webb just two months ago. Webb 38 was certain they were going to put him on the street. About $2,000 behind in rent, he was staring homelessness in the face. Right in the face. I love my family. I felt like I let them down, Webb said. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are facing homelessness, okay? But the big thing is right now that they need to get the, this rental assistance to the landlords so that they can keep these people in their homes, okay? Landlords don't like vacancy. We don't like evicting people. It isn't cheap to turn over a unit, okay? We want people to stay in their homes because we want to just keep getting paid, but we cannot provide free housing for the homeless or for the needy. That isn't our job. That's the job of social services. That isn't a job of a private individual or a private business. Webb and his wife have a two-year-old son. Their apartment in a four-family building in St. Louis was the only home the toddler had ever known. The pandemic ended Webb's job as a computer engineer, he said. He didn't know where to turn and didn't know about the Conflict Resolution Center. CRC routinely checks court proceedings for cases like his. A call from CRC changed his life. He came out of nowhere, he said. There are two sides to every story, and there are two groups of people who are really being affected by this pandemic, said B. Woodcock, outreaching, outreach and marketing manager for CRC. Yes, two groups, tenants and landlords. Yeah, keep the landlords in mind as well. Whenever you're thinking about eviction moratoriums, you have to realize that landlords are the ones who are being held financially responsible to take care of the tenants during the eviction moratoriums. That means that you know people like me, I have to pay to house and keep other people housed during an eviction moratorium if they decide not to pay. During the pandemic, more than 3,000 potential eviction notices or eviction cases have been put on hold in St. Louis City and County Courts, but tenants like Webb still have had to sweat out deadlines for the resumption of evictions. They were first set to resume in March, which courts extended to April and just extended again to the end of May in the city of St. Louis and end of June in St. Louis County. I was racked with guilt, you know. I'm the sole breadwinner of the house, Webb said. That's what the main thing is. It's not that people who are hurting are just looking for a free handout. They're looking for assistance so they can continue to live their regular life, their everyday normal life, Woodcock said. Well, my personal opinion is that the assistance should be directed straight to the landlords, okay? Don't, let's not even put the tenants in the situation. The landlords are the ones who have to provide the housing, so the landlords are the one who needs the money, okay? Do not send rental assistance to the tenant and then expect them to pay the landlord. That just doesn't work, and you know, cities are finding that out. The Conflict Resolution Center has helped more than 300 tenants and landlords in the city find a way forward through mediation, she said. Instead of wasting time and money in the courts, landlords get paid and families like Webb stay in their homes. CRC has CARES Act funding to help with past due rent and also sets up a future payment plan. That's all Webb needed. I can't believe it. When the paperwork went through, I was still on pins and needles. All I had to do was pay my month's rent up and everything else was gone, he said. We got a settlement. I'm not behind. I'm good with the landlady. Life is good right now. You see, this is the way the programs are supposed to be working. And this is what's not happening in a lot of states and a lot of cities throughout the U.S. Okay? 
the program is set up to, you know, the tenant goes, you know, gets signs up for the program. The landlord gets paid. The tenant gets to stay in the place. Okay. That's what should be happening. And instead what's happening is the eviction moratorium is in place. The funds are, have been directed to the state. The state has not distributed the funds to the landlord or they distribute it straight to the tenant and the landlord never gets paid. So the landlord is then providing free housing for a tenant for a year or more. And it's all coming straight out of their pocket. Webb has a full, new full-time job at a food warehouse. He keeps a file folder full of those court documents that were piling up to remind him just how sweet home really is. So yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a better news story than I normally tell, but it does kind of go into the way that the relief programs and that the rental assistance are supposed to work. And fortunately in St. Louis and in Missouri, that's the way it's working right now.